it broke the record. Biggest Bantamweight Championship fight ever. O'Malley isn't gonna be a star. He is a star. You are the fucking man now. <laughs> like whatever, whatever next pay per view you're in, holy shit, that's gonna be big. Bro, and if it's you wait. and Makachev, or if it's you and Ilya, you and Ilya would be crazy. I don't think you folks understand. I think Real Madrid has what over a hundred million followers on Instagram. I think over like hundred and fifty million. For them to be promoting a guy like Ilya. A global brand like you can't get that kind of publicity in almost any other place. Alex Pereira has still only been here for two and a half years, bro. Seriously. It's been two and a half years, and the dude's already had two UFC championships. Okay. They love him, dog. The, the the reception this guy gets everywhere we go is nuts. There's an interesting discussion. This was one that was just kind of ruminating in my head recently. So we just got done talking about on our last video how well the UFC is performing in terms of numbers. Um, I'm more curious to talk about like, okay, so one of the biggest sales is obviously McGregor coming back. This might be his last fight. We don't really know. Who's the next guy? McGregor is a unicorn. To answer the, the initial question, mm -hmm. I don't think for the next 20, maybe even 30 years, no, we'll I, see somebody like him. I don't think so. If we're lucky, yeah. I'm wrong. Who's behind him right now? Jones, but he appears to be leaving soon. So, so who's who's like the next new guy? I guess is the real question. I feel like you have to say it's Alex Pereira, no? Surely the next biggest star after anyone else who has who has the mystique about him, who has that that feeling like he's something special and you can't miss when he fights. Mm. You know, only a few people have had that in the UFC. Some people have earned it over being a long career as a veteran, but to someone to come in and really take the UFC in a short space of time, I mean, how, how can you deny that it's not Alex Pereira? And this is coming from someone who saw Alex Pereira as their enemy. I didn't want anything to do with the guy. I didn't want to fund him or fuel him in any way. I wanted to see him destroyed. And I got that. Hmm. But since then... <laughs> wow, man. Since then, he has won me over because he's been himself... And he has gone out there and he's fought time and time again and at the highest level and succeeded. Well, he's also the guy that UFC have probably backed the most by giving him those main event slots in New York, which is something no one else has done. So I think there's also all of his performances, but also the support from the UFC goes alongside of that. And yeah, if you want to look at right now who the next guy is in terms of who's consistently selling pay-per-views, well, it's Pereira, right? Especially if you look at UFC 300, granted that was going to sell anyway, but it is one of the biggest gates of all time. You can't really take that away. And he was headlining the event. So, but I don't know. It's kind of a double barrel question for me because we can talk about the people who are here right now, sort of who have grown in this period where we've lost Connor. And I don't think there's really anyone who who obviously rivals Connor in terms of star power. I don't know if there ever will be. And right now, there definitely isn't anyone who's any close. But I do think we have two people currently on the roster who are positioned to become bigger superstars than we've seen from anyone in the last sort of five years. And I think that's Ilya Teporia and Sean O'Malley. Now, granted, you might think they're not even comparable right now, which is fair enough. But Anderson Silva, it took a long time for him to become the superstar that he was. He had to knock out a lot of people and put on consistent performances. If mm -hmm. both of those guys defend their belts for the next three years with crazy dominant performances, I 100% think they could be massive stars, like mm -hmm. much bigger than anyone else who's come along we, since McGregor. We're we not looking for stars right now. You know, you would think- Well, they, they're on their way. In, in, they are on their way. And like, especially with Teporia, he has that untapped market of Spain. Like when we saw him go home- Europe, he, really? He had, well, yeah, he had that whole thing rolled out for him. He was going here and there, showing off his belt on balconies, going to the Bernabeu, having mass celebrations of- just one person, let alone like a national team or something like that. It seemed like Spain was really embracing the fact of what he had done. Mm. And I, I think even with us, when we finally had Leon become the champion, we didn't really have that here for him. And it's like we hadn't had a British, obviously Spain's first champion ever. I don't know. I wasn't around when Bisping finally got it done. I don't know if it, there was a feeling of that in the UK at all. In this day and age with social media and the way things can spread so quickly. No, but the way so like stars could be made so incredibly quickly. How often on Twitter do you just see the next random biggest streamer who's got like twenty million subs you've never heard of? 
Yeah. It's like they, people seem to come out from nowhere overnight. Mm -hmm. And you would think with people like O'Malley, if people like Tapore would explode bigger than they are. But I feel like Pereira has had that that reach because he's he's made, he's headlined Madison, Madison Square Garden twice. Right. He's been on 300. Sure, but my point is whose ceiling is higher? Like Tapore's and Sean's or Pereira's? They have, they have way more room because of right. Pereira's age, because of the weight classes he's fighting. That's and, what know, I mean. More potential yeah, so shut down. up, yeah? But I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, we're talking about who's the biggest star. If McGregor wasn't here, Jones is injured. Mm -hmm. Who's the biggest star we've well, got? Well, Dustin Poirier. Um, one thing that hasn't been talked about is on uh, where we were looking the other day for the uh, wh where we were looking for the biggest gate sales that the UFC's ever had for pay per views. It was O'Malley yeah, versus right. Vera. Yeah, I Aljo mean, wasn't there. No. Aljo wasn't even there. No. It's crazy. How did they do that without him? I mean, uh, clearly people are willing to pay front row seats to go see that. Guy. Also, that that card was 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 a bit more stacked was a bit more helpful to to O'Malley's case. I'm not saying he doesn't deserve that success because I, I want him to have that, but it, mm. it's... There, uh, we had Poirier and Benoit on there. Obviously, Poirier's a big sell yeah, Poirier, in, in America. Definitely. Obviously, he's a fan favourite. I mean, favorite I, I think he's another guy who, who's, you know, done really well. He's really one of the top stars. But like you said, legs. Like, he's he's coming out with this this um, title fight in, what, a couple of weeks. And he's like, this is my my eight-mile moment, as uh, I think you mentioned last time, Jason. Is Lose that, yourself. Yeah, he's he's got this cage. chance. And if oh. not, he's probably... Spaghetti. Maybe, he might retire. Yeah, so, spaghetti, baby. He's gone then. Islam with the 8.3 million Instagram followers, double Tuporia and double every O'Malley and double Partan. So what? why aren't we talking about him? Why Luke? does his videos always suck in our channel? I think Islam's like almost doubled his popularity since he knocked out Volkanovski. To yeah. be honest, I, I think he. I, I, I don't maybe. know if that makes you popular though. I think it makes you dislike. I think it did. Well, make I you also popular. think the English-speaking audience um, isn't letting go of Habib yet. Yeah, true. they're yeah. still just seeing him. In the shadow, like they, they, I think a ton of fans are still seeing it that way because the truth is, yeah, we get a fuck ton of comments of people saying that. Mm -hmm. You know, we pe people literally tell us that. Um, that's not how we see it. Um, obviously, he's the best champion in the UFC right now in terms of. I mean, I don't know. I I don't see anybody beating him. You know, I mm -hmm. love Poirier. I think sure. he's outstanding, but I don't see him beating no him. No featherweight. It's I don't see know. McGregor beating him. I don't see Chandler beating him. I don't see Ma Sarukin is the best test, which yeah. I, mm -hmm. which is why I want to see that. Behind that, it's probably still Oliveira because you could have just as well argued Oliveira mm -hmm. won, but that first fight wasn't particularly close. Yeah. Um, I think he, it's a, a good point that you bring up that we're still attached to Habib, but at the same time, of those eight point three million followers, how many of them do you think are associated with islam because of habib like his association oh, sure, and relationship certainly. has boosted him as well so uh, it is a bit of a hindrance in that way but it's definitely like also giving him a push beyond everybody it's like else. a bit like ksi and deji right? look <laughs> shut up with this bullshit <laughs> so your well, boy holloway pitch us without a doubt the the person who stole the show was max holloway mm. and he single-handedly at least for me brought back the idea of what BMF was supposed to be. Yeah. It's not just something where the UFC just decided to throw it on a card to make it sell a little bit better kind of last minute because they need another card for that yeah. month. Um, and don't get me wrong. They, they are BMFs between Poirier and Gaethje. I'm not saying that they aren't, but I'm also saying it wasn't an organic thing. Mm. And what Max Holloway did was he took that back by doing the craziest shit. And to, to do that, to basically give Gaethje an opportunity in the last 10 seconds as the power puncher in the situation to come and give him his best shot and ends up knocking him out at the very last second. I mean, it does not get more legendary than that. And he's got his pick of the litter now because if he wants to fight at 145, that's a fresh matchup. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the best thing ever for him that Volkanovski is no longer the champion there. And even if he was, he probably hyped enough at this point to even get a quadrilogy. That happened yeah. at 125. It's not unheard of to happen now. Another, uh, another feather to his cap is that he now has something everybody wants. By going out there, putting that performance on, legitimizing the BMF as doing BMF type things. Taporia wants to fight Max for that belt. Mm. If he doesn't have that belt on the line. He doesn't want to fight Max. And obviously we know why that is. But the fact that he wants the BMF, when a lot of people saw it as, you know, a Power Rangers type, you know, uh, novelty belt that, you know, runner-ups get. But yeah. no, now Taporia wants it. The champion at one, 145 wants that belt. And it shows you how much weight it has after Max went out there and did his thing. 
So, I mean, more than rightly as well, if you hear, if you're at the barbers or you're at the pub or whatever, and you hear about this BMF in the UFC, it's way more interesting than any other contender that you have to, you know, encourage your friend over. I will say with Max, for me, you know, maybe this has all changed because of UFC 300, because he definitely stole the show, as he said. But compared to guys like McGregor or even O'Malley, definitely Anderson, I don't think people show up just to watch a Max Holloway fight. It's always about Max Holloway and the opponent. Without a good opponent, I don't think Max is on the same level as a lot of other guys. Previously, maybe after 300, that would change. I think it's shown in the fight night against Yair. You know, when we just put Max in there to headline, I know he doesn't have a title, but he, I don't, he's not necessarily a guy people will show up to watch him fight anybody. Anderson Silva, McGregor, you, you watch him fight well, anybody. I, I, don't know. I, I feel like was, it's about the match. I think there's a pre-Holloway uh, now. I, yeah. I think there's a pre-300 Holloway yeah, and a post-300 right. Holloway. I think, I think it's, right. the paradigm has definitely changed now for Now people p- will probably just see also, him fight that, anybody. That knockout, I was, I was talking about social media and the shareability of things. That knockout was like viral like yeah. no other. Yeah. Like that was everywhere. And every, no matter who you were, you would have seen that. Whether you're 60-year-old mom on Facebook or, you know, the, the, the target demographic, you would have seen that multiple times on your feed. Mm. And the thing is, too, if you go back and look through Max Holloway's catalog, you get nothing but backing that up. Yeah. You, know, you get both Aldo fights. Um, even if he didn't necessarily win all of the Volkanovsky fights, particularly the second one, would mm. be the one that I think people would really gravitate towards for Max. And then, yeah, you look at the Yair fight. Um, I mean, you look at uh, uh, the Cub Swanson fight. Like, yeah. I mean, this guy just throws down, you know? Yeah, and people love his fight style. I just think with O'Malley, you know, people spent so much money on that gate and it was to see him fight Vera, who's a good guy. You know, going, and the narrative was he didn't really deserve the title fight. You can argue, you know, he, he lost him before. It's a compelling matchup. But that's people are paying to see O'Malley. They're not paying to see O'Malley fight Vera, really. Yeah. With Max, it's like, I don't know people just pay to see max it's always max and a, and a high another high level opponent you're paying for the matchup i mean it, nobody's stolen like the highlights of this year like that mm. one particular moment and uh, doing it on the biggest stage for the biggest card also happens to be for the bmf title i think all those things uh, make a really strong case yeah. um i don't know but but if i am you know I'm, I'm trying to make the argument for everybody as well as i can here um I'm trying to think if there's anybody else. I mean, Drikus Duplessis is about to be fighting Israel Adesanya in South Africa. I think that's what is being targeted. And what you're about to see is what we just saw with Ilya mm. in his home country just going fucking nuts. So that there is a potential of that going over the moon if they go there and the crowd just eats it up I, like crazy. And they've never yeah. been there before. So that yeah. crowd's going to go crazy. So the 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 question is, what does that fight look like? Can he get a, a good win? Does he end up losing to his I don't you know, know if that makes Drickus a star. I think the event would be crazy because obviously if there's something we know, there's a similar vibe mm. uh, to, to like European uh, football fans or similar vibe to that in South Africa. Very passionate, mm. big sports nation. And obviously we'll really get behind their people. But it's, I don't think that makes Drickus a star. It's just like you're making the best out of who you have. That may be really harsh to say. Yeah. But I think the fact that Drickus obviously had a really good run to the title. He was very active. He was fighting a lot. Um, but obviously he then captured the title against not the best competition he could have done considering he had such a rivalry with Izzy and then has to fight Sean for the title in Canada. I don't understand that. He he beat the champ. He beat the champ, but it's maybe not the champ everyone saw as the most like. Well, going into it, we it made. A close fight. We I think made, you're against popular opinion on that. No, one. we ma- we made videos in this on this podcast about how this was going to be the biggest rivalry we had seen because it was so heated. Yeah, there was such bad blood between yeah, him and Izzy point. of that contestant over who is the cha- real champion of Africa, all that stupid stuff. Yeah. Um, and it was set to be like this really, John Jones DC. Heated rivalry of these two guys really disliking each other. Yeah. Um, and we never got that. And I think that diminished uh, people's interest in Drickus. And then he won the belt and then has been gone for such a long time. Mm. And it's like, it's keeping that momentum up is so important. I think that's why Izzy succeeded. I think that's why Volk succeeded. Um, O'Malley has been somewhat active, but not maybe as much as I think people would like him to be. But I think like being 
active, especially in this era of champions, is so important, and we're missing that a little bit. Another thing with Izzy is, you know, he has that X factor of uh, an international audience, if, especially if they go to Africa, you know. Like, it's the same thing with Ilya. Like, Sean O'Malley can be huge and is big, but it's still kind of inside the US, and, yeah. and a lot of people do get trapped there, even Max to an extent. Mm. But if they go to Africa, you know, you could get people from all different kinds of sports who want to make that trip to Africa and be a part of that show, which yeah. only boosts it. The same way that when the PFL goes to France, we get all the French footballers in there. When the UFC goes to Spain and Ilya's on that card, I'm sure all of those footballers are going to go watch Ilya. So if they go down to Africa, I, I there's think a ton of people are going to be there. Yeah, I think it's always good to pioneer something, especially that great, to to go to somewhere yeah. new and you could be that guy but to that push can, that forward. It gives him an advantage over a lot of these other guys who, who struggle to break out of the US or yeah, and that's why Islam's got 8.3 million followers because he's got an international audience. You know, if I'm going to answer the question, I think it probably is what you guys were leaning towards at the beginning. I'm probably leaning, if it's right now, Pereira. Yeah. But there are so many other people right now that yeah. I feel like it's either on the cusp of just kind of, you know, breaking through. Yeah. Or, you know, it could fizzle out and they just lose yeah. and have a bunch of boring fights. But For me, it's like that that singularity effect is what I'm looking at. And I feel like people will watch Alex Pereira fight anybody. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't matter who his opponent is. They want to watch Alex Pereira. You can't someone. say that about a lot of people right now. So I was fully excited for the one month heavyweight turnaround because it would have had that mysticism. It would have yeah. had that guy who would step up and just yeah. fucking fight people. <laughs> Well, um, yeah, so uh, a really fun discussion. I'm sure, like, because we're just kind of going off the top of our head, spitballing here. I'm sure there's somebody, uh, hopefully we didn't leave out anybody too obvious there. But a really fun discussion. Mm. Uh, I think this is something that just even, you know, everybody's thinking about right now. Yeah. Where is that next star? And it feels like there's a lot happening right now. Like, I, I, I think it's what happens for us old heads is a lot of us do this. We'll just look back and just think it was amazing back in the day. But if I were to look back literally at 2014 and compare it to right now, it was Anderson Silva was gone. He had just lost yeah. and he was out for over a year due to his leg breaking. GSP had just retired. Mm -hmm. The greats were like falling as we were yeah. seeing it. John Jones hadn't sold his biggest pay-per-view yet. That didn't happen until 2015 and that was still under a million buys. It just... McGregor was in the UFC, but he was way before. It wasn't until 2015. It was a couple of years before, you know, he had the gotten madness. to that point. And um, yeah, so it's like when I look at it right now versus my feeling in 2014 um, in some of those kind of low periods, which I think a lot of people are saying that we're in, at least in terms of star power, that's probably the most similar period that I can think of. Yeah. Uh, since I've been a fan and I think this is way better than that. So if you did enjoy this video, it would mean a lot to us if you could go down to the membership and click the join button because it is only two ninety nine. dollars Valian. Are you signed up? No, not anymore. I actually cancelled all my subscriptions. But after that excellent speech, I'm going to resubscribe right now.